Good morning. Hello, how are you? Welcome to the Congregational United Church of Christ in Humboldt, Iowa. We're glad that you're here with us. Come on into our service. Because no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. So come on, join us. When we accept the non-utilitarian goodness of life, a world that doesn't need a why, we tune into the raw delight in the world. Beauty decenters our ego by helping us realize that life is its own justification. As we let go of how everything relates to us, serves us, benefits us, we begin to appreciate all things for their own worth and beauty and our desire for their flourishing intensifies. When we turn this idea onto our own selves, we can let go of the expectations of others and the societal standards of beauty in regard to our own worth.
Let us pray. Divine goodness, Holy One, pause us for this moment, bear us up in this time, hold us for eternity. We turn our spirits to truth. We begin to let go of expectations. We allow all beings the fullness of their own beauty. As we join together in song, we say, Amen. Hi kids. You know, we're doing this search for beauty thing. Well, I have a question for you. What is shiny and reflects one of the most beautiful things on this earth when you look into it? Can you guess it? Hmm. Okay, let me see if I can give you another clue. What do you look into when you, let's say, brush your teeth? No, not the sink. What do you look into when you want to see yourself? When you want to see one of the most beautiful things on this earth. A mirror. A mirror, right? Yeah. Let's go back in the sanctuary. So, kind of tippy, aren't we, when we walk? But that's okay. We haven't been in the sanctuary for a long time, so I thought we'd be here today. When we look in the mirror, we can see ourselves. And each one of us is the most beautiful thing on the earth. Did you know that? You are. You truly are. Just ask your mom and dad or your grandma and grandpa. Don't ask your brother and sister though. They might not tell you the truth. It's really good to see yourself in the mirror. Because today, we're going to read in the scriptures a story that is like a love letter from God. It says, look at how beautiful you are. Yeah, look at how beautiful you are. And that's, you know, that's sometimes hard to believe. But I can tell you that lots of us adults have a hard time believing it too about ourselves. 
but it is true. And you can also trust that no matter how unique or different you are than anyone else, who you are, exactly who you are, you are the most beautiful creation to God. God calls you beautiful. You don't even have to try. You don't even have to comb your hair. If you're an adult like me, you don't even have to put on makeup. This week, I invite you to get permission, got to get permission and help probably from an adult to make a great big heart on your bathroom mirror so that each time you go to that mirror to wash your face or brush your hair or scrub your teeth, you will see that you are loved because you are beautiful to God and to everyone else. So can you imagine a heart around your face? Hmm. Imagine that it is something that everyone sees, a heart around your face. Let's pray. God of goodness, thank you for creating us, for making us beautiful and loved, help me help you. Let others know they are beautiful and love too. For the beauty of the earth. Amen. Bye. See you next week. The Song of Songs is biblical poetry at its most lush. In this book, adoration for Another is full of metaphors from nature. The voice is like a coo of a dove. The curve of the landscape is seen as the curve of a body. Perhaps the hills and mountains are the curve of the beloved creator. And our bodies are to be seen as the beautiful landmark of the same artisan of life. In this passage today, the culminating conclusion is that there is no flaw in the utter beauty of the subject of adoration. That doesn't mean that perfection is the goal, but that there is no flaw in imperfection. And the beauty of the one beheld is not dependent on the judgment of the beholder. Let us enter this Lectio Divina, allowing judgment to suspend, to lift, to dissipate, so that we might adore all things, even ourselves, as the dearest to whom this letter is addressed. Look at you. So beautiful, my dearest. Look at you, so beautiful. Look at your eyes, sweet as doves, behind the veil that your hair makes as it cascades from your head like a flock of young goats, black ones bounding down off Mount Gilead. And your teeth are sheep, white as the day they were born, were newly shorn and freshly washed, each with its perfect mate. Not one of them is alone. Why should we be? And ah, the lips of that lovely mouth, a ribbon of scarlet. 
Your temples behind that veil glow like the halves of a freshly sliced pomegranate. Your neck has the grace of David's tower with its jewels hung round it like the shields of a thousand warriors. And your breasts, like the twin fawns of a gazelle hiding among the lilies. All my nights, till the sun comes chasing its shadows. Let me play in these perfumed hills, these mountains scented with myrrh. You are utterly beautiful, my dearest. Not a single flaw in you. So before I left the church on Thursday, I made several attempts to record a message um, to include in this service. For a number of reasons, uh, like phone alarms going off, uh, phone calls, um, text messages, <laughs> uh, losing my train of thought, that kind of stuff. I finally just shut down everything and said, I'm going home. So I got in the car and headed south to Creston. On this particular trip, my daughter-in-law, Sarah, whom I call my third daughter, um, accompanied me in order to visit some friends that she had in the area. As we rolled down the uh, road, Sarah plugged in her phone to listen to um, some songs that she had on it, and I promptly fell asleep. About 30 minutes into the drive, I woke up to the sound of Hugh Jackman and the cast of The Greatest Showman. If you have never seen that movie, it's worth watching. But on Thursday, as Kalia Settle belled it out, I'm not a stranger to the dark, hide away, they say, because we don't want your broken parts. I've learned to be ashamed of all my scars. Run away, they say. No one will love you as you are. In that moment, I realized why I hadn't succeeded with recording of my message at church, because it wasn't what God wanted you all to hear. Um, in short, I hadn't taken time to listen to the story. We often fail to listen to the story, to God's love story. Um, love story for that which God created. Not necessarily um, the cosmos and the creatures that live within that cosmos, but the love story of God for humankind. The Song of Songs is that love story. Reading the Song of Songs can really can make you blush, not just from the descriptions contained within it, but because it's almost as if we are listening to two individuals with a private conversation. And yet, if we really listen, we find ourselves amazed at the wonder, the beauty, the respect 
the love that is being voiced in that story. It isn't a graphic sex tale, but it's a story of the beauty of loving another, um, the sense of amazement that they are loved in return in spite of all their flaws. It's a story of how one loving and being loved desires to protect both the one they love and the sacredness, the beauty of the love that exists between them. As the movie The Greatest Showman demonstrates, too often we associate beauty with a physical being. However, physical beauty can disappear or be destroyed within a blink of an eye. But the beauty of our souls, it goes deeper. It's a beauty of sustenance. The beauty we find when we gaze upon another human being or a puppy or the ocean or the grandeur of a mountain, they awaken in us something that exists beyond our daily concerns. We find ourselves awakened to the need to have that little puppy snuggle and give little puppy kisses all over, or we appreciate the fact that the water, the snow melting in the mountains runs down into the ocean and helps feed that wonderful meal that we had last night. We open ourselves to the interconnectedness of everything. Rather than questioning our existence, we revel in it. In her upcoming book, Beguiled by Beauty, Dr. Wendy Farley writes this, the beauty of nature and all of beautiful things lets us experience the world without a why. It has no reason other than itself. Let the heavens be glad, let the earth rejoice, the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the fields exalt and everything in it. Then shall the trees of the woods sing for joy. First Chronicles 16, 31 through 33. This joyfulness is not for something else. It is the purpose of life. The characters of the greatest showman the two individuals in the Song of Songs, each one of us have a deep need to connect with others, to care for and be cared for um, just as they are, we are, without a why, without a desire to change the other or to make them more acceptable in the eyes of the other lover or anyone else. Without a desire to have a change required of ourselves so that we become more acceptable in the eyes of others. Rather, they, we, recognize one another's beauty just as they, we are. The last few weeks, we have explored ways in which um, we take purposeful time to explore and consider that around us. When one lives a contemplative lifestyle, it allows us to become more focused and passionate about all that we undertake while at the same time letting go of some of the needless desire to control. That is something that's so ingrained in all of us, isn't it? Uh, Mr. Eckhart 
refers to this um, spiritual practice as uh, without a why. Yeah. Our early Christian ancestors actually understood this. Before Christianity emerged as a religion, um, our early brothers and sisters in Christ simply said that they were followers of the way or the way of life. Um, the Didache, which is a uh, ancient uh, handbook, if you will, of Christian practices explains it like this. There are two ways, one of life, the other of death. And there is a great difference between the two. On the one hand then, the way of life is this. First, you will love the God that made you. Second, you will love your neighbor as yourself. On the other hand, the way of life is this. As many things as you might not wish to happen to you, likewise, do not do to another. The Didache, one, verses one through two. Pretty much what Jesus said, isn't it? Yeah. Is it easy? Uh-uh, no, it isn't. Finding the beauty um, in others takes work, sometimes very intentional work. Finding the beauty in oneself sometimes is even more difficult, especially when we've been told over and over to hide away, to hide our broken parts because nobody will love us. The Song of Songs, God's love story for and about us reminds us that we don't need to get caught up in our ugliness because we're all battered and bruised. We all have scars. We all have ugliness. And in our world today, we seem to get really caught up in that ugliness. What if though, what if we intentionally return to seeking out the beauty that is also found in each and every one of us. The without a why beauty, the because you are glorious beauty that God's song tells us of. So here's the thought. Go and find a mirror. Go and find a mirror and start finding that beauty. The beauty of the one that you see reflected back at you. I am not a stranger to the dark. Hide away, they say, because we don't want your broken parts. I've learned to be ashamed of all my scars. Run away, they say, no one will love you as you are But I won't let them break me down to dust I know that there's a place for us For we are glorious When the sharpest words wanna cut me down I'm gonna send a blood, gonna drown them out I am brave, I am bruised, I am I'm meant to be, this is me Look out, cause here I come And I'm marching on to the beat I drum I'm not scared to be seen I make no apologies This is me
This series, we have been looking around to more deeply notice the fullness, the joys, the sorrows of life. Um, it's poignant and mundane moments. It's little victories and it's immense tragedies. We are coming to know greater compassion by coming to care more deeply as we contemplate with more intention and awareness. Today we acknowledge the pain of judgment that comes with captivity to expectations that did not come from God, but came from others or even ourselves. We hold to standards that are ultimately not what true beauty or a beautiful life is about. In this time of prayer, I invite you to open your hands upward, place them on your lap, and allow expectations to lift. Feel the heaviness of measuring up just kind of drift away. And feel it replaced by compassion both for yourself and by extension for others. Let us pray. tired and feel you can't get through uncertainty comes over you just look around when your problems seem too much to bear unsure if there's someone who cares just look around whether stranger neighbor family or friend on each other in tough times we can depend look around kindness love is ours to share we can see it everywhere though it might seem like forever look around even in the darkest night Things are gonna be all right. We'll get through this together. Just look around. Loving God, we thank you for this opportunity to give to others. As you have blessed us with the gifts we now give, May they be a blessing to others, offering them a chance to see the beauty in the world. In the name of the one who gave his life so we might have the beauty of a life eternal, we pray. Amen. As I sit here today in the sanctuary, enjoying the peace and the beauty of it, It reminds me how much I miss everyone and how much I hope that we will soon be together in this space. But in the meantime, while we are apart, we can continue, continue to be the church. We can continue to be the Congregational United Church of Christ of Humboldt. Being a church requires us to take
take action. This week, you are invited to a contemplative practice that's based on our message. And it could occur in two ways. Um, so you might want to set a reminder to spend some silent time with your palms open on your lap, as we did in prayer today. Contemplating further what expectations and messages you are holding about what you should be. Imagine them lifted and released. You could also note on a mirror that you frequently look in, like maybe on a daily basis, and maybe write a note on that mirror that says, look at you, look at you, so beautiful, dearest one, so beautiful. Believe this voice of the divine lover for the beauty of the earth. Please join me in our closing hymn. The world is so varied and beautiful, 
Seek wisdom wherever it is to be found, and may the goodness of the Creator, the companionship of the Christ, and the insight of the Spirit infuse your life now and always. Go in peace. Amen. Can they?